Hello, Professor Takahashi, and hello, MND 305. Uh, my name is Jamie Kornblatt, and for my book vlog project, I decided to read the book She Said. It is by journalists Jody Cantor and Megan Tuwe. It's around 295 pages, uh, 310 with the index, and I can confirm that I have never read this book before. I had heard of the movie and the book. Um, I heard of the, the, the book because of the movie, um, but I hadn't read it before uh, before it was assigned for this class. Um, and obviously I took some notes along, so I have some quotes to share later. Um, so this book is about breaking the sexual harassment story of very popular movie producer Harvey Weinstein and the aftermath of uh, Jody and Megan's reporting. There was a whole Me Too movement that really sparked because of their article that was published on the New York Times. So. A couple of you know reporting lessons that I learned from this book. My beat is very different from what this book talks about. You know, my beat is about the arts and culture of Central New York and what is different about it and how do they operate on a smaller scale. But some a couple things I learned. Um, first thing would be that patience is a virtue. You know, these women were sexual assault survivors, and some of them took a while to confess their truth, but Jody and Megan stood by, and they never forced them to come out. They always were there if they were going to go on record, but they never forced them to. Their patience is what helped them let these women go on record. You know, if Jody and Megan were forcing them to go on record, they would have never, because this is a very personal matter to them. Um, for example, Rwanda Chu was one of the last women in contact with them to tell their truth. And it wasn't until Gwyneth Paltrow's, you know, meeting at their home that Rwanda decided a few weeks later, okay, well, all of these women told their truth, I'm going to go ahead and tell mine. The second would be to record everything. I usually record just my, my phone and voice memos. Um, and a professor in my journalism class last year always taught us that, um, you know, to keep recording a few seconds after you end your last question um, because there might be a sound bite or something that you could use um, based on something, something that someone said after you end your interview. Um, third, you know, just making the effort of showing up. It's a little bit different in my scenario, but you know, because they went to um, San Francisco and London to talk to two of these people. Um, but I think they did a really good job of showing up when someone doesn't um, answer your email. And maybe this is more applicable to a publication like the New York Times, uh, such a big publication, but just really feeling strongly like I need to talk to this person. I'm just gonna show up even though they're not responding to my email. Um, I think that shows what a good journalist is. You know, they're willing to go to great lengths to get a story. Uh, third uh, or fourth, uh, they had a really quick turnaround. Um, as soon as these women were ready to go on record, their editor just said, their editor told them to just write. You know, they were willing to go on the record. They needed to start writing. It was a quick turnaround. They gave Harvey Weinstein 48 hours to respond, and then he's finally responded. They they wrote his uh, response in their story, and they published it. Very quick turnaround, something that I think over the years as a journalist, I'll, we'll probably learn to just do it quickly. Um, Two reasons why I think other journalists could gain insight. Gosh, I mean, when dealing with cases such as rape and sexual assault, you have to be so delicate with survivors. It's a very sensitive issue and you have to know how to deal with it. You never want to, like I said before, you never want to force them um, to come out on the record when they're not ready to. And you always want to listen to them and just be cognizant that they have dealt with a lot. And it's a very sensitive subject. Um, and I think Jody and Megan did a really wonderful job of dealing with a very sensitive subject like this. Um, and they were so respectful to them as well. And that's, I think, what helped these survivors realize it's okay to go on the record. Uh, number two, I mean, this book really helps you understand the rules of investigative journalism. Um, for example, on the record, off the record, I think those are pretty general terms that a lot of journalism students would know. But the whole background thing, they, Jody and Megan talk a lot about background in this book. Um, for example, I think it was Megan who met with the, he was either a lawyer or a businessman and Brian Park and I believe that conversation was on background you know was information that they could use but they're not going to cite the person that was a term I wasn't as familiar with and um, I think even if you aren't going to go into investigative journalism it helps student journalists learn the rules of that um, or any professional journalists in general I mean they just do a really good job of you know kind of explaining to people that aren't as familiar kind of the rules of investigative journalism uh, finally, I would rate this book a 9 out of 10. Um, I didn't realize the book was going to dive into issues such as the Brett Kavanaugh story, Donald Trump, um, 
Bob Weinstein, his bro- Harvey Weinstein's brother, side of the story. And finally, the gathering at Gwyneth Paltrow's home. Gosh, that was something unexpected. I didn't realize. Uh, that's something I didn't get to mention before were the quotes that I wanted to talk about. So on page 249, um, there's a quote that I really like. After Shakespeare and Love had been released, Paltrow won her first her Oscar a few months after Perkins had signed the settlement papers that would erase her story for the next 20 years. Now the two blondes were seated side by side on a rug in conversation. It just shows that these women went through very similar experiences and they were at different points of their lives uh, when uh, the allegations happened, but now they're sitting together dealing with you know, it and telling their story, coming out with their story. Uh, another one real quick. Uh, this is, uh, but her, but this is on page 253. But in her lit, lit, litling accent, she told the other women what had happened simply in her own head. In the wake of the Weinstein story, she had rewritten the history of, uh, uh, sorry, she had rewritten the history of her adult life. That's the quote that I really love. Um, so anyways, to wrap this up, I really enjoyed this book. I would really recommend it for anyone to read journalist or non-journalist um it's a great read and you know it sparked a movement so I recommend and I'm really glad I got to read it thank you